17 years ago I was diagnosed with base of tongue cancer um, and luckily uh, Chris O'Brien came into my life at that time. Unbeknownst to me, my wife was searching for a second opinion and after a couple of weeks she, she said to me one morning, she said, I've got an appointment for you this afternoon with a guy called Chris O'Brien. Apparently he's pretty good. And I said to her, oh, look, I, I don't want to see anybody else. I said, I've, 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 they're only going to tell me what I know already. And uh, she got a little upset about that. And she said to me, listen, she said, if you think I'm going to spend the next few weeks watching you sitting in a corner with your knees under your chin, you got another thing coming. I put a lot of work into getting this appointment for you. I walked into Chris's consulting rooms and uh, sat down. I was just something about it. I just sort of knew that I was in the right hands. He, he brought out this minuscule diary about the size of an iPhone and opened the page. And it was full of his minuscule writing. There wasn't a space that I could see in it. There wasn't a piece of white page left. He opened it up and he said, look, I can fit you in on June the 4th for the surgery. And I said, well, let's do it. And he got his pen out and wrote again in minuscule writing in there, <laughs> filled up the only available space by the looks of it. And, uh, and there, but I saw that diary as a metaphor for his life, just crammed full of everything. I'd rather plaintively said to him, so what do you think the chances are? And he said, look, I'd love to be able to tell you that all the good guys recover and all the bad guys don't. He said, but that's not always the case. But funnily enough, I, I, I was, I was actually comforted by that. He, he, um, you know, he just seemed very straight and extremely competent. When I first found out that he died, I was devastated. I, I just felt really alone and I guess abandoned in a funny sort of way. I know that's a little self-centered to say that. And I kept thinking of what he said to me, that not all the good guys recover and not all the bad guys go, you know. I couldn't think of a truer word. I mean, he was just one of the good guys and he didn't recover.